We're back to Neil Haley's show here on the Caregiver Dave Celebrity Segment. I'm excited to welcome the program. Caregiver Dave Nassani. Dave, how are you? Good. And uh, I think we're going to be going live starting next week. I have a special announcement, but you will have to wait till Monday to hear it when I go live on Facebook. But how are you, Dave? It's about time. I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Live. Yeah. See, but see, live only works if you bring an audience, Dave, and bring an audience <laughs> on your personal page, you know, broadcasting on any page, but your personal page. But I got to clean that up a bit. I've been kind of quiet on my personal page. <clears throat> But as everyone knows, we all go in new promotion areas. We it, it never change. We if unless we grow, we have to change to grow. That could be a good take right there, Dave. So go introduce our guest. Well, we're so excited to have actress Reagan Pasternak from HBO's Sharp Objects, and she's premiering her debut book, Griffin's Heart, and she plays Katie Lacey. <laughs> And it's available on Amazon, and we're excited to have you on the show. Welcome, hey Reagan. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey Reagan, let's kind of jump really quickly into acting. Okay. Did you always want to act? Was this something that you know? This I, I got to do it, or okay. all, your whole life want to be an entertainer? Okay. I, I I really if and I really I say this to other people when they say they want to get into it. I'm like, if you can do anything else, do it. If you know that you can't not do this, because there have been many times where I thought, oh, I'll do something else. And the truth is, it's always a lie. I, 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 I just love it. You just, you just are it. You are it or you aren't it. And I, I, I live and breathe it. I do. That's important. I'll, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it just, you know. It got me through so much, just uh, having that passion for something. You know? Yeah, and it's, it's important, Reagan, if you don't have your passion, in your life and you go deal with certain things and you kind of feel like you're being stuck in something. And I guess you chose early what you wanted to do. And I think that's fantastic. And Were the fans they, recognize passion too. They, they know if you don't have it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, it's like almost like you can't really tell what you look like. You see yourself all the time. For me, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just, I don't even know. It's just, it's the only thing that kind of, keeps me uh, focused and uh, I never get bored of it, so. Were you in theater at all growing up I, too? Yeah. Yep, so I, I started um, I started with singing actually. And so then oh. I ended up doing a ton of musical theater stuff and I and, uh, went to school for the arts and then went to college for the arts for musical theater. And, um, and right out of college ended up getting a Disney series. So I went kind of into the the film and TV world pretty quick out of college, but, um, but really musical theater is kind of always my heart, you know, it's just its own thing. <laughs> well, it's pretty common for actors to go into directing and producing and uh, other things, but um, it's, it's rare that an actor becomes an author. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes. Well, you're kind of an anomaly. Is, well, I, I, my other passion, you know what I think? <laughs> Acting, I should say, my passion is creating. I love creating. I love being creative. If I'm not creative, I'm 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 a mess. I'm not fun to be around. So, um, my other passion is animals, and and I love animals so much. And I, I guess I am an author because I have a book, and it says my yeah, name. I guess on so. It. <laughs> so, but um, but really, I almost just had to write this book. I, I just needed. I had this book inside me for many years, and uh, it mm. took a long time to get clear on what I wanted it to be. But yes, I guess I'm now an author, but I, I mainly just this author of this. Well, because of the passion, how did the passion for animals start? Is that growing up too? I think so. Um, my family always had animals. My mom, you know, my mom was into wildlife and nature and um, we always had dogs and cats and um, just kind of, my whole life I had many, listen, there was times where I had five dogs at a time growing up and then, um, and then as I got older, I had my own animals, and then uh, I got into actually kind of rescuing animals. The more I learned about how many how many homeless animals there are out there, so I've got a whole full house of I've got a, a mommy cat with tiny baby kittens in my bathroom right now that I'm oh fostering. Yeah, and I've got a you're a cat lady. I'm a cat lady, dog lady. I'm all of the ladies. I've got three so, dogs as well, and and uh, so how many animals, Reagan? Uh, well, I'm fostering the mom and the babies, and then we have one cat that's ours, and um, we've got three dogs. So we've got, I don't know, how many is that? Uh, four, it's five. It's enough. Eight, eight is enough. Eight, 
is plenty. And, See, I, and I, I, I have six kids, so I understand that, and two cats. So I guess uh, eight, so. It's I guess kids are like animals in certain ways. I, 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 I do control. Have, I have one human son as well, and he's 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 an animal lover like me. Thank goodness, because those are Neil. That, that's a great title for a book. Kids are like animals. I think I'm gonna write that down. Uh, and when you, in the, the midst of the pandemic, they're like animals. <laughs> I mean, we really have to. They not be able to go outside as much, not be able to do certain things anymore, not be able to socialize, depending on what area of the country you live. I mean, Pennsylvania is not shut down like California, but still, what the kids have gone through, Slowly. what all of us have gone through in the in a year, in a week, has been rough. And hopefully, it slows down. And animals have suffered a lot too, Reagan, haven't they? That are. You know what? You know what it's actually been both to be perfectly honest there's there the rescue the shelters have never been more empty because people finally were home knowing they had to have their kids home and they finally had time to adopt so that if there's a silver lining to all this you know horrible tragedy that's happened during covid that that is the silver lining they've been empty and, and there's wait lists for dog rescues we're here and especially in los angeles they're usually they're euthanized every other second literally yeah. and that's uh, that's really changed so that's an amazing thing that's an, and, and hopefully I, they stay adopted i know things are turning it. normal yes exactly but you know what i i right now they think have, positive yeah exactly you got it you gotta think positive but um yeah, no, having having kids, having animals during the pandemic is uh, actually having animals have been the reprieve to the pandemic, I really think. And having kids home from school and stuff, that's been tough. Totally. It's been completely tough for everybody. OK, so I have an author question. So I'm, I'm writing my fourth book now. Um, so does it does it flow for you? Do you just sit down and, and you just next thing you look at the clock, you know, 10 hours went by or is it do you get writer's block? I mean, what's the process for you? Well, I would love to know your your answer to that question after because that's <laughs> one book. But I so this book this book okay. Well, this is the answer that I started about ten years ago after I'd lost my little soulmate animal Griffin, oh. and I I felt so isolated um, talking about this kind of pain. They call it disenfranchised grief because many people don't take it. Um, take it quite seriously in society. So I, I started realizing I wasn't alone and feeling this way and I knew I wanted to write something. So I started so long ago, but I didn't really know what I wanted it to be. I didn't want it to be this heavy, sad book on grief. I knew I, I wanted it to become interactive. So as time went on, I kept writing little bits and pieces. So there would be moments where I was in that flow state for right. sure. But um, until I committed, which was about two and a half years ago, that's when I would really feel that amazing feeling that you're talking about where, and, and, and I felt both. I had many times where I had yeah. writer block and my editor would say, you need to expand on this chapter. And I would sit and I'd be so mad. And I'd, I, don't <laughs> I hate when they say that, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but um, she was always right actually. And, and I would expand on it. Sometimes it just clicks and you're like, where did this even come from? Where did, right. where, who wrote this? And sometimes I read it exactly. and I'll flip through it and I'll say, I wrote that. I, I can't. Yeah. No, I, I know that. And uh, to answer the question that you asked me, yeah. I it's both as well, because either it flows, it just depends on the mood I'm in. When I'm tired, I, I should not even try it because I'm, I'm just cheating myself. Uh, so two years ago, I just went to Hawaii for an entire month because I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And so I got my book written in Hawaii in one month. And so when I got home, of course, I had to edit it. And uh, I think it's harder to edit it than it is to write it. But do you, you don't outsource that editing, Dave? I don't outsource anything. I wear a lot of hats. Oh, oh better... my God. That's me. That, that's no, I did I'm... outsource, uh, you know, the copy editing and the, uh, right. but then, you know, you've got to take it back and you've got to, you got to do the final tweaks. You're, but you're a pro. So you, you've yeah. done this many times. I needed help for sure. So, and I deal yeah, with everybody writing should for have podcast an magazine do that. and have to write every time for podcast mm -hmm. magazine, writing sports articles for them, which, you know, have to be it's a process for me. It's like, you got to listen to the interview, then take whatever interview from that sports podcast or, you know, celebrity podcast, whatever, and go through the process and say, well, that's not going to go well, you know, taken from an interview and then creativity. And I think it's so hard. I can't yeah. imagine sitting down and writing a book. So how long did it take you? 
Well, once I committed, I, I, and you know, I'm, I'm still acting and doing all that stuff and being a mommy and, you know, balancing all that too. So I decided to commit to writing a minimum of two hours a day and whether that meant it, whether I was filming, whether whatever I was doing, I had to do two hours a day, whether it turned out to be terrible or not, I had to get it out. And so that really, that really, and most of the time I would go much longer than two hours because I'm a terrible sleeper and that helps when you're trying to write a book. Um, but um, so, so yeah, by the end, it, you know, the, that, those two and a half years, I, I, I really just, you know, buckled down and did it and tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it literally until the very last second I could. And, you know, and so, um, it was so, it was so fulfilling. It was hard. It's, and I think those final stages, the editing, all that, that right. stuff harder. Cause it's not creative. It's that's much more technical. And I'm not as good at that. I'm, I'm such a right brained thinker. And so uh, that stuff was tough and, but man, it was, it was fulfilling. It was, it felt so good. And because I believe in the book so much it's so authentic to who I am and that part of it really helped because uh I felt like I could put it out there knowing that um I hopefully am contributing something to people's you know pain that they're going through yeah. I can see you directing and producing and writing screenplays in the future can't you wow well that is so nice I don't you're a writer. You're in the um, film industry. You're an actor. Uh, yeah, writing a screenplay, you could probably do it in the dark. <laughs> oh, no, so that stuff I've done here and there, but it's, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's just, I have friends who are incredible screenwriters and right. it's just not, that's, I love being directed. I love, I love <laughs> that. I love the collaboration. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Because you're busy as, as you looked at her resume, Dave. We, we go through actor. seasons though. If you're you a know? working, if you're, she's a working actor. Working actors are busy all the time. And Reagan, as you look at your resume, you've been in a lot of stuff as a working actor, either as a major role or just a, a guest starring role to different things. And that keeps you busy, which you got to be thankful for uh, in a way, but you're always, you don't have as much time. Would you agree if you're constantly always working? Yeah, so. it's true. And then on top of that, you know, after you, we all know you have a child and then everything kind of changes, you know, your, your priorities change. I had to, yeah. I was just doing a, a reoccurring that was shot in Atlanta the last few months. <clears throat> I just came back a couple of weeks ago. So I was back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, you really, you do miss, you miss being home in a different way when you're a mom, when you're a sure. parent. So that was, that, that, that does change it. That last, that last span, that last episode that I was doing in Atlanta on this new show, I, uh, which I you can't there. say till it comes out. I right. can say it's it's a new show called Miss Pat. It's a it's a sitcom and it's on BET. I'm okay. the white lady on the show, and uh, it's hilarious. It's uh, Pat Miss Pat is a stand up comedian and she's brilliant and so special and unique what she does and very not PG. Just FYI, right. um, but um but uh, so now she has a sitcom and I just am so proud to be even a part of this show. It's so funny. What part but, do you play? I play the um, annoying um, uh, PTA mom who's because Pat, her character moves into this white right. neighborhood because she's, you know, making more money and she's moves into this. She like came the Jefferson's the moving on up. Yeah, well, she came from the hood in Atlanta. It's, it's very based on her life. She has a best selling book called Rabbit. Uh, Miss Pat right now. So it's it's tons. Tons are taken from that um, that book, which is in incredible by the way I'll plug that book that's for sure um and um so she and so it takes it takes from her life and I, I play this you know kind of clueless um right. but good-hearted very good-hearted uh PTA mom and um first we we kind of butt heads and then as the as the se season goes on we we become friends and and uh, I, Does I she patronize it. you a lot there's <laughs> it's patronized enough. I had to say it. it's not even funny. But anyway, um, no, she's there's a lot of I I'm I'm rude to her. I'm very passive aggressive to her at the beginning, and then after a while, they just start making fun of my whiteness. Pretty much is, is the joke is the, how clueless I am about so much in the show, and it's it's uh, it's done well though. Cool. It's really done well. Yeah. And see, that's interesting. And uh, based on it being based in Atlanta, who is the production company for the Speed T show? Well, so it's BT. What do you mean? I don't really. No, know. I was thinking it was maybe uh, 
production company for it now, that was involved in it because uh, it's BT that some of the BT shows are done by uh, oh gosh, my, it's tip of my no, tongue. It's not Tyler Perry. It's not, no, it's not, not Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. No, Tyler Perry, I think, wanted to buy it, get it, but they they wanted to do their own thing. I think it's just really Miss Pat and and the incredible uh, creator Jordan uh, Cooper, who and and then BET. I'm pretty sure that's it. I mean, at all our read throughs with the networks, it's just always BET people. So I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. No, that's no, that's definitely. I was just thinking Atlanta and so and yeah. shooting, but it's amazing. It's it's interesting to see how amazing how BT's grown as a, with different great shows that are on there. Well, yeah. this show is like nothing else I've ever seen on television. It is so unique. I don't know how else to say it, say it, but it's, it's both completely has zero regard for PG language and also has so much heart. It is, you know, so it's, and it's, I don't, th I've never seen anything like this on TV. So I, I don't know how it's going to be perceived, but right, I, exactly. watch it. I love good, it. Good writers. So good. So good. So let's so jump. Let's jump to the book. You've not told us all the gist of the book. So let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the book is, uh, you know, it's part memoir. It's part of my journey of figuring out what it means to mourn an animal, and um, and then it's also very, very interactive, and um, and it has tons of journaling, places for photos. Um, it's I, you know, we tried to make it absolutely as beautiful as it can be so that it's a keepsake at the end there's tons of healing exercises and um um it's it's almost as if i'm sitting with the person who has lost their animal and we're figuring it out together and and um and just honoring that kind of that i think it's great i have a, one of my clients wrote a book and she's a undertaker's daughter and she wrote a book uh light oh. in the morning about death and how to over to deal with it and how to honor everybody so it's interesting isn't it that yeah, yours is for animals and yeah. she was more of humans and how yeah. dealing with it but there's not really a lot of books out there for animals right to mourn there's their death kind of, there, there wasn't for me that was um that's why i almost started writing it there are some there for me they weren't the resources that i wanted i wanted something completely what's the word like more connect i wanted to connect and and it, i didn't want it to just be this dense textbooky kind of book i wanted it to be easy to just because you know the truth is that pain does really hurt you know i've gone through many other kinds of losses in my life and i yeah i felt that grief as big as i could feel. i felt it with my 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 first dog i grew up with i still mourn that it's interesting and the other animals that have passed on my first cat so it's weird it's weird to that's look right. at that, but there's much of mourning of uh, another loved one. It's and so that's true. Wow. And it's not weird. And that's, that's the whole thing. It's not weird. And it, and it, and to me, while I was writing it, actually, I lost my mom. Whew. And um, so I had to kind of apply the things, sorry, this happens every time. Um, I had to apply the things I was read, uh, learning about mourning an animal to my mom, you know, and you kind of realize it's all where you are in your life. It's what it, what it, you, it's every memory that you had and and those apply those apply to an animal just as much as they apply to a yeah. person they just yeah. do and 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 the part that i learned and i hope that people feel that too if they if they get the book that is that that it learning about yourself through grief is such a gift it really is and i really think it's made me a better person it's it, it i mean it sounds so cliche but it's actually true and and i've been hearing that from other people now who've read it and are writing the incredible messages and saying the same thing it's just kind of opens you up to to see who 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 was that animal that that seems so <laughs> special and who was who, who who am i you know who yeah I love that animal, you know, and you learn so much. You, you wonder why do you need such unconditional love? What, when, when did they come into your life? What was that time in your life? You know, and I, I go through all those moments in, in the book. So, and everything right. I write, the reader writes on a, on another page. So um, every experience is shared with me and that person. <laughs> yeah. I too speak about grief in one of my books. Uh, it's my life too thrive and stay alive as a caregiver or talk about the anticipatory grief, the anger, the denial, the bargaining, the depression, and finally the acceptance. But you used a term I've never heard before. I was going to Google it while you're on disenfranchised grief. Tell me about that. What is that? Yeah. So disenfranchised grief, I did not come up with that term. That's a term in the, the, the dictionary of psychology. And it is grief that 
um, society doesn't necessarily take seriously. And that could really? be worse. And that could be the loss of a job. And that could be the loss of a friend you knew back in high school, but you really didn't keep in touch with them. And so somebody's like, why are you in grief over this? And, or, or, wow. you know, wow. a, big one, a big one is, is animals. And I've never uh, heard of that. That's I'm going to have to add a chapter in my book. So yes, Reagan, so would you consider a loss of a job if you've chosen to resign? Do you still have some grief in that thought process? Because I just did resign from my job to focus on my business full time, which I had full time before and I had to get a job, but I've grown it enough now to replace that income, but it's very hard. And it's still a grief process just today, just thinking about it. Wow, Monday, my routine will be different. Right. You know, and, and, and I've spent that time. And so I understand what you did. Yeah, I, I think the point of disenfranchised grief is that if it's a loss that you feel and you're, you're, you're grieving it, then it's real. And, sure. and, right. and, and it doesn't matter what anybody else says. And you have to, you have to find space and time and you have to cultivate that yourself most of the time, even if it's for a few minutes a day and actually explore it because otherwise those things stay in you and they build up walls. They build up resistance, wow. they build up, you know, you, you, they, they permeate the way we love and see things. And, and I researched the hell out of that. So I believe that a hundred percent that, you know, people become getting anxious, they get anxiety, they get insomnia, back pain, things, body, mind stuff is real. And, and if you're not dealing with grief, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. And you might not even know why it's there, but you'll feel it. So I, I am such a huge, huge believer in that. Yeah, and it's important that people know about grief because they could be going through it, not knowing what they're going through. And it's a very scary process. And if, when somebody told me when I, oh, that you're just going through the grief process. Oh, really? And I learned about it. And I said, oh, this is kind of normal. Okay. You know, and, and it took a load off my Shoulders. I wanted to ask you, is this a children's book or is it an adult's book or is it in everybody's book? It is. It's not a children's book. There are a couple things in there that I just don't think a child is going to get. And, and um, my own stories in there, it's not, it's absolutely fine if a child wants to read it, but, right. um, but um, yeah, because I've had that question a lot. I, the cover has, has a childlike feel to it because I, I believe animals connect us to that, that part of ourselves that are, you know, that, Sure. They talk in cute voices and they, and they make us feel, you know, it's such it, because it's without language, our connection with them. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it's very of the heart. Um, but, um, so I wouldn't say it's for children, but I would say that once you read it, you might know how to talk to your children about it all better mm -hmm. maybe because you realize that it's all, you know, how, how much it's, how important it is to honor it. And what age limit would you put uh, if a child wanted to read it? I mean, what's, what's a good age where they would kind of understand it? it really depends on the child I think my, <laughs> exactly. yeah, I, really, I actually talk quite a bit about you know my son here and there and there and in, in the book because he has such a kind of otherworldly view on uncertain things that I don't know where he gets these ideas from. Um, you have a but, winner by the way Reagan you have a winner this is a perfect branding one in a lot of ways because you're differentiating yourself in this topic matter and what yeah. I would say to you as I'm all into podcasting now more than I ever was so I always consider myself a radio tv host yeah, you're gonna be on. You're on TV as well, Reagan. This is gonna be on television as well on my TV station. I have, but the point I was going and YouTube. But the fact is, and I consider myself that. But now as a podcaster, your topic alone, mourning the loss of animals. If you created a podcast just on that, you'd be top notch, huge. Really? Tell me. Well, that's interesting. Niche, niche, niche is the way to go. Yeah, I agree. And you, I might you, you, you grow advice on that at some point that's for sure because i don't i don't know that world at all i listen to podcasts non-stop but i but i everyone listens to podcasts that's why it's so true and animals and pets is a connection where two people have nothing in common one could be for biden one could be for trump just furthest from each other and a, and a pet will bring them together you are so right. I, I, I really feel that way because I, you know, I, I also have been so political, you know, I'm an, a Canadian in America who can vote now, who could vote. And, but um, you're so right that I would have my ideas. But as soon as that person, I find out they're pick up their little frou frou, cute little dog <laughs> and they're kissing, I'm like, oh, they're good. They're sweet. Exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. It really is. It, it's a connecting, it's a connecting force. Those yeah. Guys. So yeah. The, how long has the book been out, Megan? 
Um, it's only been out for maybe a month and a half. Um, so, but you know, as uh, my publicist has said, this is not a book for like a one, a, a one, one shot. This can last forever. This will be one that you can continue to promote for years and years. That, yeah, I think so. And depending on the publisher you went through, right? That if it's your book, it's your ownership, you can just continue just to run it forever. And once we go back to normal, the tips are you should be going to every pet event and be at those pet events and different places as a vendor or have someone be the vendor at those places for you. And you could sell those books all day long. This is because a gr great advice. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Because I'm used to giving those those uh, gems, and I'm going to drop more and more because the clubhouse. <laughs> I'm used to every conversation trying to make it like clubhouse. You've convinced me. <laughs> Yay! Okay, I'm waiting for money now. Come on, clubhouse. Okay, when am right. I? When is uh, clubhouse sponsored? <laughs> Today, Clubhouse sponsors the Neil Haley Show. That's what I want, right? Hi. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Dave, we'll go to the final question, but I'm very, I, I'm telling you, you have a winner that wow. can stay for long periods because the more you get to all the different people, I think you should send your book to uh, the guys from uh, the, the, do the dog show. I've interviewed both of them. Uh, all these different people, you should send to every celebrity that you don't know personally that has an animal because they really would see this as something they really want to promote. That's my thoughts, but go ahead. I hate it. I will take all the advice. If you think of anything, <laughs> you let me know. I really oh, we'll stay in touch for sure. So Dave, go ahead and uh, ask the caregiver question now, which again, we heard a little bit of the story bringing up the loss of her mom. So this is really interesting. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, so I'm a caregiver. My wife uh, had a headache when she was 52, turned into a stroke, lost her speech, became paralyzed on one side. And I didn't have caregiving on my resume. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I learned, we, we went through the grief process, you know, for about two and a half years, didn't know what it was at the beginning, but we, it was bad. I mean, she was angry most of the time. We almost broke up, but we hung in there and our love was rekindled. And now, you know, I went to a, a support group and that really helped a lot, put my oxygen mask on first. And I realized that there are other caregivers out there who are suffering. And so now I'm a Dave, the caregiver's caregiver. I help them stay alive because 30% of them die before their loved ones do. The rest of them become sicker and need a caregiver then of their own. And so I've discovered that uh, everybody is eventually going to become or need a caregiver. And so my question to you, Reagan, is has caregiving touched your life? I mean, you don't even realize it, but that pet of yours, you were the pet's caregiver. And just when the pet goes away, we suffer the same grief that we do. Dave, when, you've when just thought of another target market for caregiving, uh, caring for sick animals that are older. There you go. But go ahead. And I'd love to have you on my show and talk about the disenfranchised grief that you were talking about, in other words, because uh, my show's my radio show is to uh, caregivers as well. He's his own caregiver show. Yeah. Great, oh great. God. Well, I, I, I just right away just think you're such a special guy. I can just oh. from you. seriously, I, I mean, I mean, I hope that doesn't make you uncomfortable, but you just no, because like, I knew and, you're a special woman. <laughs> and, and you're and you're uh, just just that, that's a lot to go through. Um, well, the, you know, listen, that's a whole other talk because my mom was sick since I was seven years old. So yeah. I, I, I grew up as a caregiver. I didn't even know any other way of being. So I, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But, um, and maybe, maybe that's part of, maybe it ties into why I love animals so much. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe it's, um, there's so much. Maybe the animal was your they caregiver. Really are. <laughs> they, they are. I feel like they are our caregivers because they're so unconditional. They ask for so little, you know, at the end, it is always as hard. Feed you know? me and love me. <laughs> exactly. Here at the end, I have a dog who's old now and he's, he right. needs to go out of five seconds and he's crying. He's uncomfortable. You know, those kinds of things. And it's hard, but um, it's, it, nothing, nothing is like a, a human kind of when you have to take care of them and they're sick. And um yeah, that's a lot. Oh, I would love to. I would love to talk to you about that because um, I would love to know more about everything you went through as well. Just uh, it's it's intense. It's intense, and I believe community is everything. Do you guys know Brene Brown? You know, of course, everybody knows Brene yes. Brown. She's brilliant, brilliant. But 
she talks about connection in this way that, I mean, she's just so gifted. So but you guys she, remember Reagan, you and Dave are right down the road from each other. So you guys have to connect. That's true. That's for sure. Yeah. You can come over. We'll sure, you can, you can <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All my information's on my website, caregiverdave.com. You can check it out. Absolutely. But anyways, yes, I, I haven't quite, I've been touched quite a bit with that. And, um, it's kind of in my blood now. I don't even, I don't know another way to be. So I'll connect to you on That's that. great. So what shows right now, can we can, what are you on now currently, Reagan, to promote? Sharp Objects. Again, I, I, I want to watch the rest of it. I'm so bugged I didn't. And I, it's I like. I don't, I didn't watch the, I've never, <laughs> I think I watched the first episode. I, I watched the first three episodes because they gave me that and I was so okay. hooked and, oh, really? and, and, and I was like into it because it's just, I thought it was just a powerful show it and, is. and it really is. And then, well, I didn't game and I don't have HBO. See, there's the thing you say, well, why don't you have HBO now or whatever, but what shows do you have right now you're currently promoting that you could say that other people should check out too, not just your book. I would definitely, I would definitely say look out for Miss Pat that's coming up. That's the most recent Things since all the COVID stuff that I've been that I've been uh, working on, I have a ton on. Actually, being Erica is my my show that I did for years and years. That now it's on HBO and it's on Netflix. It's on everything. Being uh, Erica. Yeah, that was uh, that was a show yeah. I did for four years, and they're actually they're remaking it now. Of course, as they remake every show, but that was my uh, that was one of my favorites. Uh, I, there's so much. You're you're not going to be able to. I, I'm my mug is everywhere. You'll see it. Some whether you like it or not. I trust me. You I do look do. familiar. No, yeah, I, you know it's it's been doing that so long. See, but Dave doesn't remember who what certain. That's just playing Dave. <laughs> Dave forgets <laughs> things sometimes. I forget things too, but I forget people's names. Well, I'm older that's than because, you. Neil. No, but I've taken a lot of chair shots. I'm a former pro wrestler, so I've taken oh, a lot of chair shots. Taking a lot of hits to the head. Yeah, so I, I think I, I either I have too much information in my brain that I don't remember people's names, unless I really remember them. Like not remembering Tyler Perry during the interview. Come on now. <laughs> so that I mean that I so that. Sometimes when you're on the spot, there are things that I forget on the spot that I can't even believe. It's so embarrassing. Just right. like I call it see, Swiss see, cheese see, memory but, but and you just hit a hole. No, I, but I can remember stories. I'll tell you stories of different things I've had that I've said, but then it comes to names. Uh, who knows? It's scary when you think of the whole CTE thing. But so best place we connect. First of all, your book is available on Amazon, right? And all the different and and independent bookstores as well. And uh, we definitely have a link uh, to your book uh, in different shows descriptions. And also uh, just check you out in all different places, right? The other things and Miss Pat will be coming out when? Is that uh, premiering? Summer, I'm the worst. I, I think the late, late spring, early summer. And, and any other projects you can't tell us about? Good. You got yeah, other things? Got Follow me on, on Instagram. You're going to, I'll, I'll let y'all know. It'll, it'll just One of out. the new tips on Instagram, and this is a podcasting tip. Whenever you're a guest of the podcast, tell them this. You take whatever interview from Spotify, you can do it too. And you could share it to your story. So it just goes straight to the story. I learned this from, uh, from Pat Flynn. I was watching uh, his, he's a famous podcaster. And he basically said in a tip, and to share your show, the best way any episode you've inter got an interview, whatever when you find on Spotify, is you can share it easily to your story. And it's okay. awesome. It really has a cool looking thing in the story. And the other tip he gave, look at how I remember these tips and I can throw these out. Okay. Is, 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 but I remember Tyler Perry's name. And what you can do from that tip is do a quick story saying, hey, I really enjoyed this interview I did on so-and-so show about my book. And then you go right to the store and then it, the next pink then puts post the link to the story right after that okay from spotify yes okay that's because nice. it works because instagram you know you can you can do a link if you have ten thousand swipe up but that's they don't do that as much but this way it's a real good way to share the link to the spotify okay. it's it, it, so this was a tip and i'm going to try it and see what the downloads are brought but it's a great idea for you whenever you do a guest appearance well, I don't want to post it always in my feed. That's kind of, but stories, it's always good to have as long a story as possible. And then you're selling your book on your story more than on your, where Instagram won't let 
it go into the feed as much as in the Instagram That's story. True. That's true. And I, I, I was the worst with social media. I was like the last person to, I just kind of got on Instagram when I knew that I had a book coming out because I, I, I just, I, I, this is not how my brain works, but so this is all stuff. This is good for me to know. I, it's, it's all, it's all good for me. It's to good. Know. This is a tip for our audience. And if you want to know more about me, which I never promote, go to neilhaley.com, check it out. And then, and if you want to schedule a quick branding value, free branding evaluation way for me, just go to neilhaley.com. See, Dave, I've not been doing that. Let's see the action. Okay, fans. You know, and I'll, always you can find me on Clubhouse too. I have a I have a room every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. How through po- how to build podcasting, build your brand through podcasting. One to three. And Dave, you missed it when Grant Cardone jumped on stage with me. You missed you it. You should have pinged me. I did. I just I had to send that information, and then he did a PTR after that. But all right. Well, this is great. I love a little bit longer conversation. Enjoyed it. And guys, tune in. We will be live next time. Dave's all pumped up. I just got to get my <laughs> Facebook audience going. Wake up, America. And we'll, we'll be back. And But I appreciate it, everybody. Oh, and thanks again. That was the Caregiver Dave Celebrity segment. And I appreciate it, Reagan. Take care, guys. I appreciate it. See you. Bye, guys.